I uh, God radically touched my life about eight eight years ago. I was uh, you know addicted, to partying, drugs, alcohol, women, and uh, God just intervened at the right time. I almost died, overdosed, and God stepped into my life and He set me free from uh, He set me free from me and uh, gave me new life, gave me mercy, gave me grace, and uh, gave me purpose and hope. And uh, you know now I live for I live for him, and uh, it's just such an amazing ride this life. You know, just to live for God and just to live obedient to Him and not live for yourself. So it's just yeah, it's an honor to be with you guys again. I love uh, I love joining you guys and just sharing my heart and you know just encouraging you guys. You guys are already going for it, so I just feel like I'm just encouraging you guys even more, just spurring you on to keep going. Um, let me just share a couple uh, a couple testimonies. Um, so yesterday, just simple, like I went to a prayer meeting and this lady was like, uh, I got a bad knee, a lot of pain. She's like, can I, can you pray? I'm like, yeah, of course. Every, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, I don't know how I feel about it, but everyone looks at, to me as the guy that, you know, walks in healing or whatever. But my, my heart, my, my heart is to show believers that we can all heal the sick because we all have the same Holy Spirit. And so, anyways, I prayed for her, and the Lord miraculously healed her in seconds, completely healed, instantly, no pain, all pain gone from her knee. And then, uh, sometime later in the day, I was just in my office, and this lady, the cleaning lady, comes by, she's like, hey, can you pray for my back? I got a lot of pain. Prayed for her back, and in seconds, Jesus completely healed her. <laughs> it was, it was pretty amazing. Like, it just, it still blows me away. You know, I've seen God heal for, you know, since I got saved, really, about seven or eight years, and it just still blows me away. Um, today, I prayed for someone that I've been kind of discipling. Uh, they live in another province, so through Messenger, I sent uh, just a, a voice recording of a prayer. They were struggling with anxiety, and they said that they felt liquid peace and love coming upon them after listening to my prayer, so that was just kind of encouraging super cool how god is god's outside of time and space man i've seen god heal people through video through phone through uh texting through voice recording like you don't even have to be in the same room you know i was in japan a few years ago and i prayed for this lady she had i think she had shoulder pain and i i i held her hand i didn't say anything and i didn't think anything just to show you that it's not me right it's the lord and I just held her hand for about five seconds. I said, check it out. And she checks it out and she's completely healed. I didn't think anything or say anything, guys. It's it's according to your faith, right? If you if you have the if you believe that if you believe it'll happen, it will happen because that's how the Lord made things to work. Faith is faith is not blind faith, it's knowing, but faith comes from the Lord and it comes from hearing his voice. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So if you believe that your shadow will heal someone, if you believe from a place of faith, it will happen. Time and time again, guys, I've seen this stuff. Uh, so anyways, yesterday I decided to go downtown, get some food, and I went to go look for a homeless, uh, transgender homeless person that I've been ministering to. I went to go look for them, couldn't find them, but I see this person under a tree. And... Uh, catches my eye, I go turn to this person, I go to talk, and immediately I figured this person might be either homosexual or transgender as well, a different one, and I've never met this person, so I'm like, hey, how you doing, and it turns out they were transgender, and, uh, but th the difference between this one is this transgender, like the other transgender person, the kind of cool thing is that God's been really moving on this person's heart, so it's a guy that dresses like a girl, but they don't believe in the surgery of changing their body. So I'm like, yes, praise the Lord. This person, the new person I just met, this new transgender person, they, they want to get the surgery because they feel that they're in the wrong body. So, you know, it's sad whatever it got to them to that point. But I, I just got to listen, sit down beside this person, just listen to their story. And they just opened up. And they're like, I don't even, I don't normally look, like open up to people. So I don't know why I'm telling you all this. And, uh, and it's just funny, right? So I'm just listening, just loving this. This person's name is Mercy Lee. And um, that's what they said anyways. So I'm just listening. And then I'm like, so 
you feel like you're in the wrong body. So do you feel like surgery is going to help that? Do you feel like surgery is going to help you, you know, f- help you? They're like, oh yeah, for sure. I'm like, okay, well, what about all the torment and all the inward conflict, the inward turmoil that you're feeling? It's not going to, it's not going to fix that. And they're like, yeah, you're right. It's not going to fix that. You're right. Because th- this person's struggling like PTSD, all this trauma, abuse, uh, just, you know, suicidal, all the stuff. I'm like, surgery is not going to help you. And then I asked if they believed in God. And uh, this uh, Mercy Lee said, I do now. And I'm like, oh, and they tried to ex- they explain why, but it didn't really make any sense. But that's okay. But then I, I said, well, I, I shared my testimony with Mercy Lee, how God changed my life eight years ago. And um, and they were super open. And then I, I just I said, can I pray for you? And they're like, oh, um, it's okay. But maybe, could can I have a quarter? <laughs> I'm like, how about this? I'm going to give you a quarter or a loony or whatever. And I'm going to pray for you. They're like, okay, okay. So I gave them a loony and then I prayed for this person. And uh, yeah, it was just really cool to just bless them and just to love them unconditionally. I wasn't trying to change them. I wasn't trying to, you know, I wasn't saying you're going to hell. All this is is like we want them to change. Uh, they will go to hell if they don't get born again, but we got to be led by the spirit and I'm not trying to wa- wash down the message or anything, but we need to, we need to go in love. We need to be selfless love guys. And if I'm just going like, you got to repent, you're going to hell. I could do that and not do it from a place of selfless love. And I'm wrong. Although the message might be right. It's just going to turn people away. Why would they be like, who are you? You don't even take time to listen to me. The other transgender person, one thing that stood out for this person is like, you know, you remembered my name after months of not seeing me. The secular outreach, the secular outreach people, they don't even care about us. They don't even remember our names, but you remember my name and you haven't seen me in three months. And that really impacted the other transgender person. So I'm just going in love, guys. I'm just going in love. And yes. when you love, when your agenda is love, people get he- people get healed, saved, and delivered. When you want, I'm not because I'm not saying that I'm not doing those things. That's the kingdom. I'm bringing the kingdom, but it has to be done in love. Faith worketh worketh through love, right? Faith works through love from a pure heart, a genuine faith, and this and a, and a uh, clean conscience. That's the goal of the instruction. So. We need to go in this place of a pure, a pure heart and a uh, genuine faith, right? So you can't have genuine faith without the pure heart, which is the, the, that's the, that's the love that's being rooted and grounded in love. And so people know it, especially homeless people that are dr- addicted, me- mentally ill, all this stuff going on, right? They, they know when you're genuine, they know there's something different about you. I've had so many times guys where people were ready to punch me out or angry coming in like anger ready like just demonized and i'm just in love and it just disarms them they go they're like this one guy walked up to me after spitting in my friend's face i didn't know that he spat in my friend's face i don't know what i would have done but it doesn't matter i found out after this after spitting my friend's face they're walking towards me all angry like looking there as if they're they're gonna punch me or something and i just walk right up to them just really close just in love, right? And uh, they're like, "What did he say?" Are, he's like, "Are you a cop?" I was like, "I was like, no, man, I'm not a cop." And then I put my hand on his chest. I said, "Are you okay?" <laughs> and and they're like, they're like, oh, they're like, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> it's just like, Dude. just deflated the situation. And I'm like, you do that. You do that. And then they just left. And there's been so many times, guys, like this, where another time this drunk guy was coming up to me and my family at nighttime behind my the place that I lived. And they, they were coming in anger. You could tell, walking towards us. So I'm like, uh-oh, what's, uh-oh, here we go. Here's my family. I'm like, you guys just go. This person comes up to me and they're like, your life looks pretty good. I was like, I was like, my life, my life is good. Thanks to God. And I put my hand around the shoulder of this person and they were like, and I said, how are you? And they just started to bawl. They just started crying. Just started crying in the natural. It looked like they wanted to punch me, but the love of God, the presence of God with you disarms people. 
It just disarms anybody, man. It don't matter who it is. Guys, I've been in crazy chaotic times. You guys, you know, some of you guys know that we do a weekly evangelism outreach. And um, we've, I've never had anyone hurt me or punch me. Like, they've gotten mad and different things. But I've never been, you know, hurt or spat at. I, when I, my buddy got spat on, I was surprised. I was completely shocked when I found out after. But uh, you, we, you got it. Like you got to start somewhere, but eventually you get to this place, guys. That you're just walking in the anointing, in the presence, and in the love of God. And in a sense, you're untouchable. But even if you get punched, or it doesn't matter. It's for the Lord, right? Like I pray that none of us would get punched or anything. But, but uh, if it happens, you know, like you're blessed to be uh, persecuted for righteousness' sake. So, so, anyways, um. Here, I'll show you one more. So last Wednesday, we went out. Uh, so every Wednesday, I take out a team of people to train and equip them to uh, to heal the sick, to preach the gospel, just hands-on training. And uh, it's been going pretty amazing since uh, COVID's been kind of lifted a bit here in, in where I live. For about a month now, uh, the numbers have increased of how much people come out. Because during COVID, it was just two of us. And then, uh, you know, they've gone up to about 12 people now. And... Um, so we go out and we talk to a lot of homeless people, but we also talk to like anybody. I don't want to just limit it to homeless people. Like a few weeks ago, I talked to the owner of the of a subway, of a local subway restaurant. So it was really cool to talk to a business guy. I prayed for him and he was open and all that. And it just sowed seeds, right? But last week we saw that transgender person, the first one that I was looking for. And uh, the, the this person's name is Vanessa, right? Vanessa's like... Dude, this is crazy, man. Like, I was literally just going to London Drugs, uh, that's a store, to go call you. And here I am running into you. So a divine appointment. I find out, I prayed for Vanessa the week before for epilepsy. Because they had seizures, especially when they get really high and stuff because they're, you know, homeless. They have a lot of seizures. Since I prayed, Vanessa hasn't had any seizures. So that was really cool to hear that. Um... So, like, guys, we're talking, um, if you just got on here, I'm talking to, like, transgender, homeless people, addicted people, addicts, and it's just, uh, Dean knows what I'm talking about, and it's just, it's just amazing. God, God loves these people, man. He loves them, like, yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he died. He did something about that love. And I'm not saying that he, that, you know, just stay how you are. He loves you, so just stay how you are. That's what I'm saying. The love of God, when you get a hold of that love, when you get a revelation of the love of God, it changes you. You want to change. You get convicted. It's the goodness and kindness of God that leads us to repent. When you see God's love for you guys, when you see that love for you, and I'm not talking about a mental ascent, I'm talking about when you have a revelation knowledge, an experiential knowledge of the love of God, when you see how much God loves you, it changes everything. And that's where the Bible says that, um, it says in, I think in 1 John, it says that, that God actually loved us first. We can't love God unless we realize how much He loves us first. He loved us first. And that's why it says in Revelation, in uh, chapter 3, I think, speaking to one of the churches, here, let me just get it, um, The message to the, to the church of Ephesus, he says to, but I, but I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And then he says, repent and return to the deeds that you did at first. Repent and, the, and return to the deeds, to the works that you did. So there's a connection there with the love, the first love and the works. So what I want to propose is this, guys, that the first love is seeing his love first. The love, because God is love. Without God... There is zero love, okay? Listen to me. If you don't have God inside of you because you're not born again, you do not know or have love because God is love, okay? This world has a worldly love and it's selfish. It's selfish. The worldly love is if you love me, I'll love you. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. You know, when you're in, you're in a relationship and you're like, and I do this jokingly, so, you know, I'm going to point the finger on myself too, but I'll, I'll say to my wife, be like, I'll be like, don't you love me? You know, just kind of jokingly, but that's selfish. If you truly mean that, it's selfish. It's like, 
Don't you love me? I need your love. No, we don't need the love of anyone. We need God's love to completely overwhelm and completely just wreck us in his love. Because when you realize that love for you, you don't need anyone else's love. And the other thing is the acceptance of God. When you realize how much God accepts you, you don't need anybody else to accept you. And if you've got fully accepted by God, nobody can reject you because nobody can take away from you what they never gave you. You can't be, we can, as believers, we can't be rejected unless we live by the praise and acceptance of man. If we live by that, then we'll be rejected and we'll feel the rejection. If we've got our full acceptance from the Lord, if we've got it fully from the Lord and not from man, Nobody can reject you. Don't matter what happens. You'll be unoffendable. Because it's the love of God. You've seen the first love and you've become like him. Christ's likeness. Conformed to the image of his son. What's the image? Selfless love. God is love. We are created in the image and likeness of God. God is love. So we were made to be like God. We were not only made to receive the love of God, we were, we were actually created to be the love of God. Like the love of God, God himself flowing and living through us. So it's not, it's not within ourselves, it's God in us, living his life through us. You can't separate God from love. Yes, there's a severity, there's the, the holiness, and I'm all for all of that. The fear of the Lord, I'm all for all of that, and I love it. The severity of God, I'm everything. The full counsel of God. But I just felt like the Lord wanted me to touch on the love of God. And it's just important, guys, that we realize that, the, that God's love for us doesn't depend on how we behave or act. Have you guys ever felt like when you've messed up that God is, doesn't love you anymore? Or you feel like, or how about this? This is what I call circumstantial Christianity. Circumstantial Christianity is this, guys. When trials and tribulation and persecution and circumstances come your way, you question the love of God. You question, God, where are you? God, why are you allowing this to happen? Why have I been given these cards in this life? We start to question and doubt God's love when clearly it says, let me see if I can find it here. Um, so I make sure I read the whole thing here. Um, I think it's in Romans. Romans. Here, Romans 8, 35, 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It started with, with tribulation, distress, persecution, famine. Can those things separate you from the love of God? No, they can't. Because the love of God doesn't depend on how your day is going. If you're having a bad day, it doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It means that your awareness... Your eyes are on circumstances and off of truth and off of God. What you behold, you become. What you entertain, you enter in. Have you guys heard the saying, you, you are what you eat? You are what you eat, right? If you eat junk food all the time, you're going to get pimples, you're going to gain weight, you're going to get unhealthy. If you eat healthy, you're going to feel good, you're going to look good, and it's going to be awesome. Physically, I'm talking, right? Well, when we eat of God, how do you eat of God? Taste and, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you taste of God, when you experience God in the secret place, when you spend time with him, you hear his voice, you, you get touched by his presence, by his love, man. It like you become more like him. He's a God to be experienced. And this whole walk with God is we're meant to be more like him every day, guys. From glory to glory, from faith to faith. We're being conformed into the image of his son. Uh, Romans 12 2, be transformed. So there's a transformation that takes place here by the renewing of your mind. Your mind's renewed when you see Jesus clearly. When all the stuff's out of the way and you see Jesus clearly, you see his love for you. You see that there's nothing that you can do to actually stop him from loving you. And then that is what changes how you live. You no longer actually want to sin. You no longer actually want to do those things that would 
in a sense, wreck your fellowship with God. That's like, so it's not just like, oh, God loves me and I, so I can live however I want. That's perverted and demonic. That's what we call sloppy grace. It's demonic. It's a doctrine of demons. When you see the, when you see the love of God, it changes you, man. It, it leads you to re- repent, man. I like it. Like, oh my gosh, like you still, like you, you have loved me with an everlasting love. Like you knew that I would still mess up. You knew that I would still do this. You knew, and you, yet you still died for me. Oh Lord, like I don't want to do these things anymore, God, because I know they're wrong. I know they're bad for me. And I don't need, I never even wanted to do them, but I keep messing up. Help me to change God. Help me to change. And so guys, that's why he says to Romans or in Revelation three to Ephesus, he says, repent, change your mind. Uh, change the way you live. It's an inward change and then it changes how you live, right? And, uh, you know, it says that godly sorrow leads to repentance and repentance means to change your mind. So however you repent, guys, whether it's saying, sorry, Lord, I don't want to do this again, or like you're bawling your eyes on the ground, on the floor, whatever it looks like, true repentance will have fruit. So if you're bawling on your face on the floor, and there's no change, I'm not sure if it was true repentance. And if you're just like, I'm sorry, Lord, I won't do it again. And there's no change, then it's probably not true repentance. So it's not about how it looks. It's about, is there a fruit of your repentance? Produce fruit with keeping with repentance. I think John the Baptist said that. So there's fruit from the repentance. And that, and when you repent, it attracts grace. And grace is what changes you and changes how you live your life. And you, you, you just want to glorify God in all you do. So he says, repent and do the works you did at first. Okay? The works that we do, guys, it's not our own works, right? Our, our own works are like filthy rags to God. Our own works. It's doing things for God. God's up here, I'm down here, and I want to do things to please him from a place of he's over there and I'm here and I'm doing it apart from him. That's wrong. That's religion. There's no provision in that. That's you'll, That will lead to burnout. The works that we do in the Lord. First, they said, Lord, what? tell us what the works of God are. And he said, the work of God is to believe. <laughs> First is to believe. The work of God is to believe in the one whom he, who he sent. So how do we believe? Well, we need to know him intimately, privately. You spend time with him. When you spend time with God, your faith increases because you're because you're hearing his voice, right? And when your faith increases, that's when you start to believe him. And when you believe him, not only do you believe in him, but you believe him. There's a difference. The devil believes in God. But when you believe his word and what he says, because it's been highlighted by the Holy Spirit and revealed to your heart, then you get begin to step into the work of God and you do it with God, not apart from God. So that could look like anything, guys. That could look like, you know, like the obvious things like preach the gospel and uh, make disciples and heal the sick and all that stuff. And even Christ-likeness, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. It could look like God tells you to to move to another city or country. Just obedience, man. Just just living in obedience and just doing what He says. That's what pleases the Lord is just a, a laid down, yielded heart. A heart that just says, yes, Lord. I just want what you want, Jesus. I don't want my my desires. I don't want my I don't have ambitions, Lord. I just want Jesus, man. I just want to I want to know him and make him known, guys. That's the only reason I'm alive. Is to know him and make him known, guys. I'm not I'm not in this for myself, guys. I'm not perfect, guys. I'm and but I I've I'm I'm laying down everything, guys. I don't want I don't want this li- like I I want to lose my life so that I can gain him. Cuz he's he's worth it all. He's wor- worthy of it all, guys. He is greater than anything, any money, any house, woman, car, how anything, all the stuff the world has to offer. I don't care about any of it. I just want Jesus. If you look at my natural life, guys, I don't, I don't have much. Like I still live in a basement suite, in my in-laws basement suite. We're hoping for our own house soon. My wife's finishing up her master's and it's, so it's been a, it's been a trying season of, uh, her in, in her master's paying for school without loans and like just crazy stuff. But she's going to get her master's in counseling and we'll be better off financially if the Lord leads that way. Unless, you know, for some reason he leads in another way. We go off, be missionaries. I'm a missionary right now locally and I know I'll be traveling the world. 
uh, in a greater in a greater way. Uh, but uh, you know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, she's she felt the Lord tell her to do her masters in counseling, so that's what she's doing. And it's cool because uh, you know, schooling can open doors uh, in the in the secular world, right? So schooling's not bad. Um, I I did a business program, but I'm not really using it. I, I did the business program, then I got saved, and all my desires, all my ambitions, everything changed. And I threw it all out the door, and I'm like, I just want Jesus, and I just want to preach the gospel, man. That's all I care about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, um, so guys, like, like, so if you're struggling with the love of God, if you're if you're struggling to receive it, to see it, like, just repent and just receive. Just. Does, it doesn't matter what you've done, guys. It doesn't matter how badly you've messed up. God still loves you. Because His love, like I said, doesn't depend on what you've done. If it depended on what you've done, then, man, that, that'd be weird. That's just weird. That's not right. It's not right. It's, he doesn't love us based off our goodness. Because let's be honest, none of us are good. <laughs> none of us are good. He's good. Even Jesus said, why do you call me good? <laughs> There's only one that's good, and that's God. And he was talking from uh, the place of being a man in that, in that time. <laughs> you know, we obviously know Jesus is good. He's amazing. He's everything. He is God. But, uh, but like the, so the love of God is not based on how you behave, how you act, what you've done. Okay? So if it's not based on what the good that you've done, then the bad that you've done won't take it away either. Okay? So it's based off of what Jesus did on the cross and why he did it. And this is what I believe. I believe that God, yes, like Jesus had to pay a price for our sins. It, it cost him big. And sin is not a little thing. It put our Lord on the, on the cross. But I also believe this, guys, that God never lost sight of why he made us. He never lost sight of the garden and making man and woman in his image. And likeness. And what I believe, guys, is that we are in a place where Adam and Eve could have been. They were meant to eat from the tree of life. Guys, we get to eat from the tree of life every day. We have the tree of life living on the inside. It's Jesus. We get to eat of Him and the fruit of who He is every single day if we choose to. By getting alone with Him, by connecting with him through prayer, through the word, fasting, disconnecting ourselves from the world, deadening our flesh. Man, there's levels, guys, that we haven't even accessed yet of God. And I want, I don't know about you, but I want to experience as much of heaven as I possibly can, as much of God as I possibly can here and now before I get to heaven. That's just personal I, I, I'm not, you know, some people are like, I just want to go home already. Like this world is hell and there's so much evil. And yeah, there's a lot of crazy garbage, craziness, evil stuff going on in the world. That's just sickening when you think about it. But man, like we have a job, we have a duty, we have a responsibility. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're, we're calling people to repent. We're, we're imploring people to be reconciled to God. We're called to bring heaven to earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. And how does that happen? Through you. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is within you. In the Holy Spirit. The, ki the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy? In what? The Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit? In you. And in Luke uh, 10 -ish, or Luke in Luke it says that the kingdom of heaven is within you. So he want, the, the kingdom wants out of you. Jesus wants out. The king and the kingdom want out of you. So when you seek the king, who's actually already inside of you, but when you seek the king, the kingdom opens up. Not only do you, you get to experience it yourself in different ways, all for his glory and for your transformation, which is for his glory, but you actually get to release the kingdom. And what does that look like? It looks like people getting saved, healed, delivered. Families, whole families and generations coming to the Lord, transformed, delivered, all generational demons and curses, whatever you want to call them, everything destroyed off of a family because this family embraced what Jesus did for them 2000 years ago. Like God, God is, man, God is doing amazing things, guys. He's, he, what he did, I don't think we've even grasped what he did 2,000 years ago. Like Jesus won, man. He stripped the devil. He stripped the devil. The devil is a cockroach. He's a, he's a withering branch cut off 
from the source of life. He's been cut off, guys. You know, you guys know that the devil is 24-7 depressed, suicidal, full of anger and wants to die, but he can't. He wants to put his mindset into those that were made in the image of God. What's his mindset? Depressed, suicidal, angry, and all that garbage that you as a son and a daughter of God were never meant to experience. But when it comes, here's the other side, guys. If those feelings and thoughts come as a child of God, one, never partner with it. Two, never take it as your identity. But if it comes, and it will at times, you will feel it. It'll feel very real. Who cares? Who cares? If you know the truth, who gives a rip? Don't believe it. Don't partner with it. Go instantly into prayer and worship. Depression comes on me. Father, I thank you that I'm not depressed. I rebuke this depression. God, I thank you that I have peace and joy and love and hope. Father, I thank you that you live inside of me, God. God, I thank you that you're going to use me to set so many people free from depression, oppression, and possession of demons. In Jesus' name. And you start to go into war and just intimacy with God. And that thing breaks because it was never in you. It's, see, what happens is the enemy's trying to, he's outside trying to get in. Outside trying to get in. When you partner with it, you take it on as your identity, he gets a greater grip on you. Yeah, obviously there's still freedom. Jesus can still set you free. But the point is, let's not get to that point outside trying to get in. If I get a suicidal thought, a lustful thought, all these thoughts, whatever, just don't partner with it. Father, take it, take the thought captive. Just make it obedient to Christ Jesus. Whip it down. Father, I thank you. And put on the Lord Jesus Christ with your words. And make no provision to the flesh, gratifying its desires. What does that mean? When the thought comes, if you entertain it, meditate on it, you're now making provision to the flesh. And that could cause you to actually live it out if you do it long enough. So if you, can, if you continually entertain lustful thoughts, continually, and don't deal with it, and think about it, if you're, let's say you're married, and you continually, that, well, first of all, we know that that's adultery within itself. That's what Jesus said. But then that will actually cause you to go be adulterous if you don't deal with it. Because little sin leads to big sin. Little deception leads to big deception. We deal with it instantly right away, guys. With the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Word of God, with the help of everything that God's given us, because He's given us everything we need for life and godliness. He's given us everything we need. He already gave us His Son. How will He not also give us all things? Is what the Bible says. How will He not? He is such a generous God. And it's not, and it's not like a bless me club, guys. It's not a bless me club and God wants to bless you and give you all this stuff. I'm not talking about that. God wants you, he wants his image restored upon your life. And his image is not depressed. It's not sick. It's not these things. Those things are in this world because it's still a fallen world. We're in a battle. You're going to experience it. You're going to get a little dirty. That's why Jesus said, when he's washing the disciples' feet, Peter's like, no, man, uh-uh. You're not washing my feet. I should like literally, I'm not worthy. I should wash your feet. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you're not, you have no part in me. You have no part in me. And then what does he say? And they say, well, well Lord, I wash my head and, my, and everything too. He's like, no, 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 no. Those who have been cleaned only need to wash their feet. Why? Because when you go outside, what's the only thing that touches the ground? What's the only thing that touches the world? Your feet, your walk. If you've been cleansed because you're born again, you don't need to be continually born again. You're just dirty on the outside. Just your walk might have been stained. And that's, we get stained, especially when we are double-minded. That's why it says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. In uh, James, or yeah. So flip that the other way around. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. So in other words, a single mind leads you back to the pure heart. The mind of Christ. Single eye. Body full of light. That is where you have a pure heart. Because when you got born again, he gave you a new heart. The Jeremiah wicked heart is removed, given a new heart, a heart after God, which can be, like I said, stained. It could become impure if we sin, if we have a double mind. So in this world, as a Christian, I might get dirty. How do I, I plead the blood, I get back into a single mind, single eye, body full of light, I get back to that pure heart. So I don't have to be, have, 
I don't have to have a continual, uh, like born again, you know, regeneration experience. I've been made new. So just stay in that place and believe it and be aware of his love for you. Be aware of his presence, abide in his love. I'll read one more verse and I'll end with this guys in Jude, in Jude, it says Jude verse 20, but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy spirit, important, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Keep yourself in the love of God. In other, in, in book of John, and I think First John says, abide in my love. Stay in his love. Okay? Don't leave his love. What is that? Awareness of his love. Awareness of your right standing. Awareness that he's inside of you. That's being in him and living and aware of him and abiding in him. And speaking in tongues is super important, guys. It's, it's not a salvation issue, obviously. But it helps you. It's a tool to help you to build yourself up and to stay in, in a it just in a mature place. God, it, it just really it's done crazy things for me, guys. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. Like keep yourself in the love of God. Speak in tongues at all times. Conti- just abide in Him. Abide in His love and abide in His word, and you will uh, do well in this life. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, man of God. God bless you. And, you know, like, as he was speaking, I don't know where he come from, you know, like...